Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. And in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the models that we got to see in the first trailer for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And the reason I'm making an entire video on a bunch of Pokemon models is because, as everybody else noticed from the trailer, they look really, really, really good. Like, strikingly better than even the environments in the same trailer. So, why is that? Let, let's talk about it. The two Pokemon that got shown in the new trailer for Scarlet and Violet a little over a week and a half ago now were Seviper and Magnemite. Those were the two that got the community talking the most. And the reason people were so excited and interested in these models in particular is because of how better they looked compared to Seviper and Magnemite in previous Switch games. But not only that, how much detail was on the models themselves that made the Pokemon look like, you know, real animals. Specifically, on Seviper, we could see the individual details of each of its scales. Of course, Seviper is is a Pokemon designed after a real life snake and a viper. The inspiration is, is very obvious in its name. So it's going to have scaly skin and you're going to see those textures if it was a real animal in the real world. But we've never really seen that much detail on a Seviper in a Pokemon game before. I would say the two games where we've seen the most detail on the Pokemon models themselves were Pokemon Tournament, where the models were deeply detailed because they're only like 20 that they had to design, and New Pokemon Snap. And New Pokemon Snap is an interesting game to be having this discussion around because it almost feels like Game Freak took a lot of inspiration from New Pokemon Snap. Now, if I'm remembering correctly, I believe Capcom helped with the development of New Pokemon Snap, which is interesting. I wonder if Game Freak went to Capcom and asked them about, you know, how they built this game and how they built this engine because Pokemon in New Pokemon Snap looked better than I think we've ever seen them before. And not only do the Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet look pretty similar to the Pokemon models we saw in New Snap, so do the trainers. The characters, the main characters of Scarlet and Violet have this new design aesthetic which seems to be dividing the Pokemon community just, just, just a little, just a, a little bit. But it feels heavily inspired from New Pokemon Snap. Maybe these are just superficial uh, comparisons to new Pokemon Snap. Maybe it's nothing more than this design motif. That's all very possible and it's probably likely. But I think it's worth looking at how Pokemon models have changed and evolved, for lack of a better term, in the Switch era. We started with Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee where the entire design of that game was very chibi, was very cute, was playful, was toyish in a way. It was a mix between, I would say, X and Y style and uh, Sun and Moon style in terms of how the game was being portrayed. Then, of course, we got to Sword and Shield, and we're not even going to touch the debates, the endless months of arguing and back and forth in the Pokemon community about Dexit and attack animations and the reusing of Pokemon models and the reusing of assets and all of these things that just want to make you bang your head against the wall. We're not going to rehash any of that. But then we move, of course, to spin-off games like New Pokemon Snap. We get BDSP, which pretty much reused the models from Sword and Shield. Then we got Legends Arceus. And Legends Arceus, for all of the praising and criticism that the game gets, one thing that seems to be universally loved is that a lot of battle animations got new animations, a lot of attacks got new animations, and a lot of the Pokemon pop and move and exist in the overworld and in battle scenes in a way that we've never seen. They feel more fleshed out than ever. So now that we're going to Scarlet and Violet, we're seeing another jump. And I have two big questions from that jump that we're gonna talk about in just a moment. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos and hopefully enjoying them aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course. Subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe anytime. And if you do subscribe, be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. I'm not gonna make an entire video just talking specifically about Seviper's model and Magnemite's model. Stonejourner looks really good. He's in the thumbnail of this video. Um, that's not really the main point of talking about the models. They look great. Everyone's pointed that out. Why they look so detailed is one question that I have. Could it have something to do with what the mechanics, what the gimmick of this gen is going to be? Are you going to have a deeper 
kind of interaction with each of these Pokemon specifically? Is there new, is there some new refresh or a me mechanic that they want these Pokemon models to look as good as possible for? Who knows? That's a, it's a discussion that we can't really have right now because we just don't know a ton about the game. The other question, and I, I've seen a lot of people point this out on social media, is the models look incredible. The models look deeply, deeply improved from anything we've seen from Game Freak in the past. But when you juxtapose it with the overworld of Scarlet and Violet, there's a very clear distinction in quality. Now, this is not me saying that the region of Scarlet and Violet, the region that we assume is based on Spain, looks bad. As I mentioned in my, my previous video about if these games are coming out too soon, which you can check out in a card in the corner right here, I think these games look better on first reveal than Legends did, than... BDSP did and maybe Sword and Shield even though they were very selective about what they revealed with Sword and Shield from the jump so Sword and Shield looked really good off first reveal but Scarlet and Violet for the last three years are the best looking games at reveal but again it's got that jank that we've become familiar with with Game Freak during this era you could see the windmills moving at three frames a second in the background you could see some Pokemon who were in the distance moving at a deeply low frame rate this exists in Legends right now it's how they load in Pokemon models when you're not close to them it's how they load in artifacts that are far away. It's it's to save space and it's to make the game run better. And I understand it. And from a technical perspective, I get the decision to do it. It just, in some instances, it's too apparent and it looks bad to the eye. There's other instances where it can work perfectly fine. I think with Pokemon models in Legends, I don't notice the frames because of how far away I am, but something as big as a windmill in a big open world area is going to stand out. Those areas I think are obviously going to be polished a lot up to release. And that's one thing that some people have speculated on with the difference in quality between these models and the overworld itself. The models have pretty much been polished to this point. They are, you know, for lack of a better term, complete but the overworld is still gonna get another eight months, roughly, of polishing and work and improvement. And as we saw with Legends Arceus specifically, every trailer that we got leading up to release, the game looked markedly better. It looked improved, it looked like we were using the newest build, and once the game came out, of course, it still had its, it had its, its graphical issues. It's not the best looking game ever. It's not the best looking game on Switch by far, but it is a perfectly good, enjoyable looking game. If Scarlet and Violet looks better at release, or at reveal, it's gonna look 10 times better at release, one would have to imagine. And if the rest of the overworld is going to be brought up to speed with how good the models look, then we're in for an absolutely gorgeous Pokemon game. And if they are, pro that, these are a lot of big promises. If they're promising a fully open world Pokemon game that looks of the quality that these models look that are already in the game, that's really exciting. It's a really exciting thing for Pokemon fans to think about. It does bring up some interesting discussions of if the game is in this state, and they've done this a couple times now, why reveal it this early? I understand that they have a timeline that they feel the need to stick to for merchandising and for the promotional campaign and all of that, but I would have to imagine that maybe four more months would make the game in, like much better looking compared to what it is now and it already looks pretty good if they were to reveal it in May they revealed Oras in May as an example I feel like that time could be Ultra Sun Ultra Moon was revealed in May Let's Go Pikachu Unity I believe was either revealed in May or June so later Pokemon game reveals do happen it's not that you have to stick to this Pokemon day schedule and if the models look one way and the overworld looks another that could be really encouraging or maybe the two aren't connected at all Maybe the overworld is going to look how it looks with some minor polishing before release, and the models just look great. And that's great. I would love for all of the Pokemon models, as many as we get in this Pokedex, to look incredible. I think any Pokemon fan would want that, but I think it's an interesting distinction, and I think it's a distinction worth discussing, which is why I wanted to talk about it today. What do you guys think, though? Do you like how the models look in Scarlet and Violet? Do you prefer how they looked in previous games? I would I would be really curious to hear if there's anyone who thinks they maybe look a little too detailed, a little too realistic. Maybe it's because of the art style. Maybe it's just because of them themselves. Let me know down in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this discussion video, please, I would really appreciate if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps other people find the videos and it shows me that you guys want to see more Scarlet and Violet discussions moving forward. With that being said, I've been Linky and we'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.